Fentanyl is the deadliest drug threat our country has ever faced. The Justice Department will not rest until every single cartel leader, member, and associate responsible for poisoning our communities is held accountable. El Mayo is a leader and co-founder of the notorious Mexican Sinaloa cartel, what prosecutors say is one of the most violent and powerful drug trafficking organizations in the world. A Homeland Security Investigations official says the operation to arrest El Mayo had been planned for months. They say El Mayo was lured by someone he trusted, a senior ranking member of the cartel. El Mayo thought he was being flown to a secret airfield in Mexico, but instead he was flown to an airstrip close to El Paso, Texas. And when he landed, he was arrested along with the son of El Chapo. El Mayo had his first court appearance yesterday morning in Texas, pleading not guilty to multiple charges. I don't think that they are, will have any significant impact on the inner workings of the Sinaloa cartel. And as an example, I will give to you exactly what happened when the leader of the Sinaloa cartel, Chapo Guzman, was extradited to the United States. Had no impact. Mayo Zambada had been running the cartel for a number of years, and they have a very strong bench, very good leaders, the cartel has been in existence since 1989 and is currently the most powerful drug cartel in the world. They operate in six of the seven continents in the world. And Mayo Zambala was very much the Mexican version of Carlo Gambino of Italian organized crime in that he had never spent one hour in a jail cell until yesterday. But other than that, uh, hopefully the United States and Mexico will put aside differences and work together to basically decapitate the cartel because they need to impact on the infrastructure. I'm talking about corrupt politicians. I'm talking about the money laundering cells, the enforcement cells, the <laughs> logistical cells. Yeah. and others to be, be to really have a, an impact. If I can jump in there, I mean, Mr. Zambada is said to have been one of the leaders of the Sinaloa cartel who had very strong political connections. Will that help achieve, as you said, go after some of the political connections that, that have helped the cartel survive so long? That, that is true. If Mayo Zambada and... Uh, and Chapo Guzman's son, the Chapito, cooperating with U.S. authorities, you know, they can provide a lot of information on very high-ranking government officials in Mexico to include governors, mayors, members of the security forces. But apart from that, you know, there'll be, there'll have to be a collection of evidence. It just can't be their testimony alone. In your experience, how unusual is it for Mexican officials in this case to have been kept out of the loop of this operation? It's rare, but it does happen on occasion. I think that the decision is made that, you know, if they advise the Mexican government because of endemic corruption in that country, it could easily get compromised. One thing that, that caught my attention, our news partner CBS says that Joaquin Guzman Lopez, who is the son of El Chapo, uh, that he was somehow in on the operation or that he may have voluntarily handed himself in. Can you tell us a bit more about sort of what might be going on there? Well, there's uh, several versions, but you know, the one that you're talking about is the fact that Mayo Zambada was lured not only not to Texas, you mentioned that it was El Paso, Texas, and it's not your fault because the Attorney General of the United States mentioned Texas. It was actually St. Teresa, New Mexico. It was in the southern part of New Mexico where the aircraft landed yesterday. So it's a, you know it's it's a situation where uh, there's a possibility that he was lured. It, it could have been the pilot. It could have been uh, the uh, Joaquin Guzman Lopez that actually did it. But Mayo Zambada, one of his greatest fears was always being apprehended and then sent to the United States.
and now that has come to pass. Uh, you mentioned that it is in some ways a game of whack-a-mole, that while these two leaders have been apprehended today and will sort of have their day in court, uh, do you think that the other cartel leaders will be kind of jostling now to sort of fill their place? And, and will we see a reduction in the fentanyl that gets imported from Mexico? I don't think you're going to see a reduction in, in the, uh, the fentanyl because the cartel remains intact. And it's not only them, but you also have a very, very powerful and very violent uh, drug organization by the name of Jalisco New Generation Cartel. You have the uh, Familia Michoacana. You have the Gulf Cartel. There's many others producing fentanyl mm -hmm. and, and also uh, methamphetamine, synthetic drugs. And the cartels yeah. are starting to move into synthetic drugs. It's much cheaper to manufacture them. They make much more money, whereas if they have plant-based right. products, they can be eradicated, then they have to wait till the next growing cycle. Cartels nowadays, they corrupt in real companies. It's always a bad apple at every company that's not getting paid enough. They run in most of the ports. The head dog at the ports, they're getting most of their drugs through. Done made millions. And not off the job, just because he cooperating and he helping the cartels move a lot of their dope through. And also, they done put they put a $70,000 hit on a K-9 dog, so you know they don't care. They reckless with it. They putting it inside bananas. They, they being too creative. It's crazy. So how you going to stop that? War on drugs are never end because they so corrupt. Politicians is so corrupt in Mexico. First, they got to get on board with the United States. If they don't get on board and always helping the cartels, it's a wrap. And now they finna start corrupting hospitals. They'll buy large lump sums of fentanyl so they can put the right ingredients inside the pills so they can make them on their own. So any little pharmacies, hospitals, and all of that, they about to corrupt. They corrupting real, legitimate companies. But let me know what y'all think about this crazy story. We at Juan, Mexico.
the notorious drug lord El Chapo, arrested and taken to the same maximum security prison his father escaped from eight years ago. Ovidio Guzman is accused of leading a faction of his father's former Sinaloa cartel, one of the largest drug trafficking organizations in the world. The arrest sparked a wave of violence. Dozens were killed, including 10 military personnel. The president of Mexico has defended the operation. The vidas. We regret the loss of lives of those who died while carrying out their jobs. We also regret other losses. Following the arrest, dozens of vehicles were set alight, and at least two planes at local airports were hit by gunfire in attacks blamed on the Sinaloa cartel. These criminal organizations shot with weapons at aircraft from the Mexican Air Force and from commercial airlines and at the international Culiacan airport facilities. Nevertheless, they did not achieve their goal of rescuing the alleged offender because we neutralized him. This isn't the first time such violence has been seen. <laughs> Guzman was first captured in 2019, but Mexican security forces released him to avoid the threat of further retribution from his supporters. We, of course, have been closely following... He's been on America's radar for years, with the U.S. State Department previously offering a $5 million reward for information leading to his arrest or conviction. Casi, casi. Mira, veo otro corriendo y el pan. 